Hey guys, Moidog here, and today we're going to be going over the basics of Squad. With the game finally leaving early access and being officially released, this guide is to help you new players understand the basic game mechanics, the game modes you'll typically see, as well as some tips and tricks to help you have a good first game. But before we do that, I do want to remind everyone that I stream a lot of squad on Twitch at twitch.tv slash moidog. I squad lead, run vehicles, and play practically every kit in the game. And as an official squad partner, we often have first looks and insights you can't get anywhere else. If you have any questions or you simply want to watch some squad live, come hang out with us. I also have viewer game days where I lock a squad and I squad lead for you guys. It's a lot of fun, so I hope to see you there. Additionally, if you are looking to buy a squad, or other tactical shooters and you do want to support the channel, don't forget to check out my official game store at moidog.gg where your purchase supports me directly. So you finally did it. You bought Squad, you downloaded it, you installed it, and now you're about to jump into a server, but you're kind of nervous because you don't want to go in game, meet eight strangers, and screw something up. I get it. Squad can be kind of intimidating, but honestly, it's not that bad if you just take it step by step. After installing the game, the very first thing I would do as a new player is complete the tutorial, which you can find under the training tab. Now, I know it might seem kind of a cop-out for a intro to squad video to say, hey, just do the tutorial, but honestly, it's a really well-made tutorial. The tutorial is about 10 to 20 minutes long, depending how much time you spend wandering around and looking at each station. Although you do have some pretty simple movement stuff in the beginning, I would highly recommend taking some time here in the middle because the devs have done a really good job of not only having voiceovers but also including text boxes with each area so that way they explain each item you're looking at. This goes over fobs or forward operating bases, tabs or your spawn bunkers, rallies, weapons, vehicles, vehicle components, voice chat, resupply, supply, anti-tank weapons, it's all right there. I'm the type of person that learns by doing. All in all, I think it's a pretty good intro to the game, and if you do want a little more training or just practice with a specific weapon or vehicle, you can just go into the training range here in the middle. This will spawn you in into a completely empty training range with infinite ammo and respawning vehicles. Here, just grab a weapon, fire, and run around and have fun. Now, I often get asked, okay, I completed the tutorial, but what next? I keep joining a game and I still have no idea what's going on. What's the point of squad? And although it may look like a complicated game from the outside, it really is quite simple. At its most basic level, squad is just two teams fighting over objectives in an attempt to reduce the enemy's team ticket count to zero. Now, these objectives change depending on the game mode and can result in you attacking, defending, controlling territory, or searching out weapon caches to destroy, but ultimately, it's still all about these tickets. Tickets are what matter in squad, not your KD, which might be a bit weird to hear if you're used to games like Call of Duty or even Battlefield. Everything in-game costs tickets. You cost one ticket, this transport costs five tickets, this radio costs 10 tickets, and this tank costs 15 tickets. To win in squad, you need to keep these tickets in mind and try to capture objectives in ways which preserves your team's tickets while draining the enemies. Putting this in perspective, a team that has 100 infantry deaths but have also lost 10 radios, 4 helicopters, 2 tanks, and 10 trucks will lose against a team that has has had 200 infantry deaths, but didn't lose a single vehicle or fob radio. This is because although the team died a lot, they were able to keep control of their bases, did not lose any radios, and protected their vehicles. Now, as we mentioned previously, how we use these tickets is slightly dependent on the game mode. We're going to keep it simple and use one of the most common modes, Advanced and Secure. In Advanced and Secure, or AAS as you'll commonly hear it, two teams start on opposite sides of the map and capture objectives along the way. These objectives also cost tickets, and capturing a neutral point rewards your team with plus 20 tickets. Capturing an enemy-controlled objective gives you 50 tickets, however, while removing 20 tickets from the enemy. This might be a bit confusing, so let's take a look at an example. Both teams start the game with 300 tickets. They both capture their first two objectives, which give them 20 tickets each, resulting in 340 tickets aside. Now, the teams finally meet in the middle, and they begin fighting over this last point. 
During the fight, Russia loses two infantry squads, a truck and a helicopter, whereas the US loses one whole infantry squad and a truck before they eventually capture it and gain 20 more tickets. At the end of the fight, Russia has 312 tickets, whereas the US has 346. Soon after, Russia counterattacks the point, resulting in the American base being destroyed, as well as the infantry squad defending it and a helicopter, while only losing a couple Russian infantry themselves. After the attack, the Americans currently have 302 tickets, while Russia has 310, but they control the point and are neutralizing it, and then they eventually capture it. Once captured, they will receive plus 50 tickets and now have 360 tickets, while the US will lose 20 tickets and are now at 302 tickets. This constant back and forth with tickets is what can make games incredibly fun, intense, nerve-wracking, exciting, and pretty much every other emotion you can think of. Ask any squad vet and I'm sure they have had their own war story of that one game they played way back in the day where their team had been absolutely stomped on for an hour before they finally managed to claw their way back by destroying a couple vehicles, knocking out a couple radios, using medics to revive and save their fellow infantry players, only to somehow come out with some amazing last ditch defense and capture a couple points in order to gain the precious tickets they needed to win. Now that you've played the tutorial and we also have an idea how the tickets and game modes work, it's time for your first game. One of the best things about Squad is that it is one of the few games nowadays that has community run servers, which means that clans and gaming communities host their own server and have their own admin teams make sure everyone plays by the rules. Instead of matchmaking, you can simply search the place that you want to play day in and day out, and more often than not, players stick to one or two servers every time they want to play Squad. I'd recommend finding a server that gets you about 100 to 150 ping. And if you have a good game or two there, keep going back to it. Usually you'll start to recognize player names and soon realize that, hey, that guy's a good squad leader or hey, maybe he's a good pilot. After a while, you'll start to build in-game friendships with people that you can rely on when things start going crazy. Additionally, since these are community servers, many also have related discords, so I would highly encourage you guys to go and check out your server's discord and really become a part of the community. When you join the game, you'll want to first join a squad by clicking the join button here. Once in squad, I'd strongly recommend using your microphone and telling your squad leader that you just joined and that you're a new player. Don't be scared. Squad leaders usually want to help you, and they will tell you where to spawn and what's going on in game. So although it might be intimidating jumping in and talking with eight strangers, I've found that most of the time these are positive experiences if you're willing to learn and communicate. The biggest mistake you can make is get impatient and create a squad yourself. If you create a squad, you'll more often than not have people join that squad and expect you to lead. As a new player, you don't know how to lead, or at least you don't know the game mechanics enough to really feel confident. It might take a minute or two, but do not create the squad, wait until a spot opens up, and then jump in. It's gonna be a much better experience. As a new player, I would encourage you to stick with the Rifleman kit and try to pick one with the most powerful optic. As a Rifleman, you'll also be equipped with grenades and smoke, as well as an ammo bag which your teammates can rearm off of, which is incredibly helpful for your team. You'll hear a lot of people recommend playing Medic if you're new, and although I don't completely disagree with that, if you are new and you're not sure what you're doing, it can be really stressful trying to stay alive yourself while healing and keeping your teammates alive when you don't really know what's going on. As a Rifleman, all you have to do is stick with your squad and follow their lead, which means you'll be able to spend more time listening to your team and learning the map instead of lying down healing someone. Although there are many more kits and squad to choose from, as a new player, let the more experienced ones take the fire support and specialist roles until you become more familiar with the game. Unlike Call of Duty or Battlefield, you have a limited number of roles per squad, and if you take a marksman kit, it could prevent your squad from having an anti-tank kit, which could be super important if you're on a map with a lot of vehicles. If you're a few games in and you do want to explore with other kits, ask your squad leader what he needs or if he wants something specific. He may ask you to take something that you've never tried before and if you are uncomfortable with a weapon, just ask how to use it. I would much rather my squad mate ask me how to fire this RPG with this wonky looking scope than watch it fly past the vehicle because he didn't know how to use it and was too nervous to ask. Now that we've covered the basics, here's a few tips. 
don't give up if you're shot. When you're shot and killed in squad, usually you are just downed, which means you'll see this screen with the button to either give up or call a medic and see a timer. In this screen, you are not dead and you have not cost your team one ticket yet. The worst habit I see new players do is instantly give up once they are shot, which doesn't give friendly players a chance to revive them, not only saving a ticket, but saving you the time it takes to spawn in and run all the way back to the fight. Squad is a slower paced game and you typically have anywhere from three to five minutes to get picked up and saved by your teammate. What I like to do in the meantime is open up my map and try to figure out what's going on around me. Use your microphone, talk with your squad and try to do everything you can to help your team out and save that one ticket. Look at your map. By pressing M, you can bring up your mini map, but you can also press caps lock to bring up your command map, which allows you to click, drag, and zoom around. A lot of times, if you're waiting around, it's not a bad idea to pop open this map and see what's going on, just like we mentioned if you're dead and waiting for a revive. You should also make sure you have the right information showing on your map. I would recommend to click your cogwheel on the top right and make sure to toggle on show fob viewing radii and fob supply points. This will make it easier to see where your fob is and the build and ammo you have available. Additionally, if things look too small, you can also increase the size of the markers as well. Be clear when you're speaking. Now, I don't mean you need to have perfect English, but when you use your microphone, make sure you're using your comms correctly. V is for local chat and B is for squad chat, and there are some community rules when using these channels. Local chat is for simple chit chat or calling things out using terms like left, right, or a compass direction, like 180 degrees. Since only the people that are near you can hear local, these calls can be useful and help orient friendlies quickly to where you're taking fire or about to engage. On squad chat, however, try not to say things like left, right, or compass directions since you could be nowhere near your squad mate at the time. For squad callouts, I like to use large landmarks, terrain features, or buildings. That way, everyone in squad chat knows what you're talking about and nobody will be spinning in circles trying to find an enemy. Don't spawn in on random spawn locations. The biggest key to success in squad is sticking with your squad. Now this might seem obvious, but oftentimes players will simply see a spawn point, spawn in, and then run around the map aimlessly. Just because you are dead and waiting for a spawn doesn't mean you should spawn right away. It's always good to ask your squad leader where they want you to move to, and sometimes they'll have you spawn on a rally, a hab that is just about to be built, or even reset and spawn back in main. Don't be that guy that spawns in the middle of nowhere 900 meters away from their squad. You're not helping anyone, and it will be probably 10 or 15 minutes before you even get back to anywhere. Try not to sprint all the time. You have stamina, and by sprinting everywhere, you'll quickly deplete your stamina bar, which will cause significant weapon sway if you have to fire your weapon. It's a good rule of thumb to sprint until your stamina is about halfway through, then walk until it fills back up and repeat. This way, you'll never have to worry about not having stamina to hold your breath, steady your weapon, and take an accurate shot. Slowing down will also prevent you from just getting killed, since it will make you move slower around the map, giving you time to actually take a chance and look to see what you're about to run into. Make sure to rearm. When you spawn in for the first time, you'll always have full ammo, but each successive spawn, you'll only have the ammo you had when you died. When you're spawning at a hab, make sure you stop by this ammo crate and top off. If there's not enough ammo for everything, you can select specific items by pressing F and then moving your cursor to each item and pressing rearm. If you have to prioritize something, grab an extra bandage. And if you did end up swapping kits between when you died and you're about to respawn, then you will have to rearm your whole kit. If you died as a rifleman and you're now trying to respawn as a medic, you will only spawn in with a couple mags and a couple bandages. So do make sure you top off completely as you do swap kits. Know how to throw grenades. Now, I'm one to speak since I have probably one of the worst lucks with grenades, but new players often don't know that you can overhand and underhand grenades. Left click will just throw it naturally, whereas right click will actually do a small underhand motion. When throwing your grenades, line up your thumb for where you want the grenade to be thrown. If you're doing it underhand instead of your thumb, use your pinky. This will greatly increase the accuracy of your grenades, and some of these maps have a lot of close quarter areas where the overhand grenade just simply won't work. 
Lastly, have fun. Now, this might seem like a cheesy tip, but I actually mean it. Squad can be a frustrating game, even if you've spent hundreds or thousands of hours playing, and you get into that one map where you're walking around, and it seems like it's been an hour, you haven't seen anyone, you keep getting shot, and you just don't know what to do. This happens to the best of us, but the worst thing to do is to start taking out on your teammates. If nobody's talking, be the first one to ask a question, and usually that will be enough of an icebreaker to start getting comms going. There have been some games where my team has gotten absolutely destroyed, but I had so much fun with my squad that it didn't oh really God. matter. What the, it's a bait. It's a bait. Now, obviously, there's a lot more you can do in squad, but I think these tips should give you a solid enough base to feel comfortable with your got, first got game. Once you start feeling confident, try your hand at a new kit, ask to jump into a vehicle, or try the helicopter training to get your feel of flying. There is so much you can do in squad, and with the amount of game modes, weapons, vehicles, and maps, even after thousands of hours, I can honestly say that I'm still learning. Well, that's about it. Did I miss anything any of you squad vets think I should include? Or do any of you new players have a question that maybe I didn't answer? Drop a comment below, and I'll try to get back to y'all as best as I can. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe for more guides and gameplay. But, that's it for me. Good luck in game, and see you next time. Peace.